2020. Please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Here. Councillor McBrudy. Here. Councillor Hill. He's excused. Councillor Plunkett. Here. Councillor Burridge. Here. I'd like a motion to approve the minutes of the May 18th, 2020 committee meeting. Councillor McBrudy. Councillor Burridge. Mm -hmm. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrudy. Yes. Councillor Plunkett. Yes. Councillor Burridge. Yes. Is there uh, any old business? Seeing none, moving right along to the first item under new business. Item number one, Mayor William J. Barlow Jr. and the city clerk, Mark Tesorario, request discussion regarding the purchase of contract management software for use by the city clerk's office. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and I believe uh, Mark Tesorio is on the line as well to answer anything I can, but I have a pretty good grasp on it. This agenda item came out of uh, uh, gaining four years of experience in dealing with various uh, contracts that come before city government, whether they're uh, union labor contracts or water and sewer agreements with other municipalities uh, or service agreements with other municipalities, organizations, or businesses. We have uh, quite a few of them. You know, we have various uh, water contracts with Oswego Town, Scriba, Indec, in Novellus, uh, Exelon. We have various sewer contracts with uh, similar surrounding municipalities and organizations. Um, and then within those contracts, for example, are rate increases or decreases. So, for instance, a uh, contract can be a five-year contract that calls for uh, just using arbitrary numbers, a thousand dollar increase every year for uh, five years, or uh, some contracts we have actually uh, reference a um, uh, index that you have to get on the internet to uh, to look up. For instance, uh, we had a, a water agreement with Novellus where that's the case, and you actually have to look up and do a formula to get the uh, rate fee that's applied. So. All of these contracts really aren't um, consistent. They all have different formats. They've all been executed in certain years with certain administrations, with certain city attorneys who all have different styles. So it becomes really convoluted and confusing. And uh, what prompted this agenda item to get to the point is we found out that uh, we were actually losing quite a bit of money because we weren't keeping current on the necessary rate changes that we had with contracts that go back anywhere from three to five, 10, 20 years. So, um, you know, there was, uh, I won't get, I won't name the uh, local the business here. Um, but uh, in short, we ended up going into negotiations with a uh, somebody who we provide water with in the area. And what we found is we were undercharging them for uh, several years um, because there was no uh, alert to uh, alert city government. This contract was signed many, many years ago, long before uh, I showed up at city hall or any of us and um, nothing ever alerted city government, uh, the clerk's office, billing office, mayor's office, attorney's office that uh, every six months or every year. Or so there was supposed to be a, very small rate increase. And over time, those increases build up. Um, so we were missing some revenue there. And also we found that, uh, well, I mean, for example, when I took office, uh, a lot of the contracts we had with other municipalities were expired. Um, and, you know, luckily we stumbled on it a couple months in, but nothing alerted uh, me or my administration the first couple of months to get negotiating these contracts. Uh, we were looking for other things when these things came up. So um, nobody's fault, I don't think, um, just a product of uh, bureaucracy, a lot of paperwork, a lot of records. And, um, you know, but we want to make it right using some uh, modern technology. So uh, this software company, they actually do business with uh, uh, Oswego Health, for instance. Um, they also do business with a, a lot of other municipalities around uh, Mark Tesorario and his staff uh, reached out to three or four companies to uh, to uh, see who, who could serve us out there. Once I brought this concern and this void in our system to him, um, they determined after doing some uh, uh, background checks or uh, ref reference checks uh, that this company was most affordable and probably most effective. You'll 
see in your paperwork the uh, fee to get this uh, up and running. It's an annual fee, but the first year is the most expensive year where it's approximately $6,100 to get it set up and implemented. And then uh, I think you'll see in your paperwork, it goes down almost by half uh, for the annual um, per for the annual uh, subscription or or uh, fee that you have to pay, and not only does this, uh, my main concern was city contracts and other documents that need our attention periodically, but uh, this software also uh, can help keep track of ins insurance certificates that contractors uh, often need, or for use of public space certificates. Um, uh, there's a plumbing license, electrical license, all of these things can be logged into the software, not only to alert us and keep them current, but uh, also to uh, be able to communicate quickly between departments. Um, the clerk staff, code enforcement staff can tell you there's a lot of communication when building permits, rental permits, public use permits are pulled, where the code's office is calling the clerk's office or the chamberlain's office is calling the uh, uh, Chamberlain's office, engineering office is calling, uh, clerk's office, so on and so forth. So we think this can, can be a soft software that can easily uh, make a whole lot of um, uh, bureaucracy at City Hall go away, can eliminate a lot of uh, uh, time-consuming work for the clerk's office, and also moves uh, some of our record-keeping digital so that uh, our offices and departments can share files digitally through email instead of uh, running up and down stairs and scanning papers and uh, all of that stuff. So uh, we think it's an appropriate um, software to get at a very reasonable fee, and uh, it'll save us a lot of time and energy in the long run. All right. Thank you, Mira, for explaining that in great detail. It uh, does appear that it's time to um, move into the modern age and, and, um, and make it more efficient. Uh, I did have one quick question. Is Mark Tosverio on the line? Yes. Mark, I see that there were two options on the uh, quote that we got from Cobblestone. Uh, one was for uh, uh, three named users and one was for a four named user. Uh, I was wondering, uh, uh, is three named users, which is the contract that looks like that you want to go with, uh, is that going to be sufficient enough uh, as opposed to the four named users? Yeah, so the way it works is we'll have Emily, Tress, and then uh, Kevin, city attorney, will be the users that will have access to input data. Now we can email anybody in city government without them being a licensed user. So three licenses should be more than enough for us. All right, very good. Uh, and, uh, and it was an extra about $1,100 for that fourth user. So if you can do without it, then uh, that's great. We can save uh, $1,100. Yeah. Very good. Any questions or comments uh, from the council for the mayor or uh, Mr. Tesorio? Seeing none, can I yes. have a motion? Yes, I do. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilor. Yes, I don't, uh, Mr. Tessereri or the mayor can answer this. I agree we should have this, like you say, get out of the old age and come in with the new. But do we have to put this out to bid? Is it legal to do that or can we just pick one company? I'm just asking. Uh, this is a, considered a professional service, and uh, it's the uh, fee is small enough that it's not required. Okay, thank you. you we did question. have Mark reach out to some other uh, companies. I'm not sure if he get, went far enough as to get quotes from them, and but he did talk uh, to other companies about the services and what they have to offer. I can Very give you a little input on that. So this doesn't um, this contract, the cobblestone, the one I picked. Um, does not limit the amount of data you can input. So a lot of the other um, companies charge you by the number of contracts you have. So I thought that was kind of a restriction we didn't want to go with, and they were also more money. So that's how we ended up choosing this besides the references. There's no uh, restriction on the amount of contacts you can, contracts you can have in there. Perfect. All right. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments or concerns from anybody? Uh, Please speak up. It's hard for me to see uh, anybody who's raising their hand, but uh, anybody else? Um, I'll chime in. Mark, when you talked to other companies that had used the service for references, did anybody have any, were there any negative comments about long-term either expense or? 
No, I, I had all good comments. The only comment was that a lot of people did not use all of the professional services that they offer up front. So I did confirm that if we do not use all the hours of training, we won't get billed for that. So this could end up being less than $6,100 if we don't use all the hours of training. That was really the only comment I had. A couple of people told me well, we ended up not spending the whole amount because we didn't need the, so many hours of training. So that's a good thing. Thank you. All right, very good. Uh, anybody else have any questions for Mark or the mayor? Seeing none, can I have a motion, please? Councillor Plunkett and Councillor Burridge. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor Plunkett. Yes. Councillor Burridge. Yes. And we need a resolution for this. We'll take care of it. Yes, Mr. Tesorario will take care of that. Yep. Moving right along to item number two, Robert A. Corradino is requesting a budget transfer from the Tourism Contracted Services Account, A.6475.0440, to the Softball Reserve Account in an amount not to exceed $7,500 for the purchase and replacement of bulbs in the light poles at Legends Softball Complex. And I guess I'll take this one since it's got my name on it. Um, uh, we... Uh, we did contract with a company called Champions um, back in uh, March of 2018, and they do manage our facility there uh, for the adult softball and kickball leagues. Uh, but under the contract we signed, uh, we are the city of, uh, of Oswego responsible for certain items and uh, having lights in the light poles is one of them. And we got a uh, quote from uh, Rombo Electric uh, for the uh, electric part, and uh, which was 5450. And uh, we got a quote on the light bulbs, which was uh, about almost $1,400 uh, for approximately 40 bulbs that we'll be replacing uh, on those light bulb poles. Uh, I think this uh, is a, certainly a good sign given uh, what's gone on for the last uh, 90 days uh, that uh, some form of uh, normalcy is going to be happening soon. Uh, there's going to be uh, uh, ball players on, on baseball and softball fields uh, in our city. Uh, playing playing ball and and uh, that would probably be a welcome sight and sound. So, um, does anybody have any questions about this uh, budget transfer? We are transferring from the tourism account, uh, as you probably know. Most of the events that the tourism uh, uh, committee uh, has been involved in over the past few years is not happening this year. So there is some excess funds that are available. Uh, so uh, we're transferring some unused funds uh, from that account. Again, is there anybody that has any questions or comments about this particular item? Rob, is um, yes, in here. is there when we talk about the forty bulbs? Is that exactly what we need right now? The bulbs that are out, or will that leave us with some for replacing bulbs as they go out? Is this Actually, a good time yeah. to take advantage? That's a very good question. Uh, uh, I went up there with uh, Mr. Buskey, and we counted about forty bulbs that were out. And uh, this contract, uh, this uh, proposal is uh, for purchasing 50 bulbs. Okay. So we'll have extra. Uh, I remember when they replaced some before, uh, you know, they, they could drop one or two <laughs> or find an extra one or two that isn't, uh, isn't working that we didn't count. But yes, we are purchasing uh, approximately 10 more. Okay. Extra. It just sounds like a good time to take advantage of volume discount, if there are any. <laughs> yes, for, very true, very true. Anybody else have any concerns or questions on uh, item number two? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion, please? Councillor uh, McBurdy, Councillor Plunkett. Councillor Corradino. Yes. Councillor McBurdy. Yes. Councillor Plunkett. Yes. Councillor Burridge. Yes. All right, moving along to item number three. Robert A. Corradino is requesting permission for the city chamberlain to transfer $10,000 from the general fund contingent account, A.1990.0460, to the softball reserve account for the purchase of clay infield material for the Legend Softball Complex. Let me uh, handle this one as well. Um, again, this is similar to uh, item number two. Uh, under the contract we signed, we are responsible for certain items. 
And um, the infield clay material, it's not a, a dirt, but it is a clay mixture that's uh, in the infield. If anybody's ever played softball or baseball, uh, they're probably familiar with this. And uh, it's been uh, three years since uh, that's been replenished. And uh, again, anybody who's ever played uh, the game knows that uh, the wind blows uh, some of it away. Uh, people uh, put it on their cleats and they carry it back to their uh, cars. They'll, if you slide into second, it ends up in your uniform. So again, uh, when you play as many games as played on the complex uh, over the course of a season, uh, there's going to be some uh, uh, removal of the clay infield. So we did get a price uh, uh, in in your package. You saw that uh, the price was a little over $12,000 uh, for the material and the spreading of the material. Um, the, um, the company Champions is going to be paying uh, a little over $2,000 of the uh, $12,000, and the city's part of it will be $10,000. Uh, and we are transferring this, as you can see, from the general fund contingent account. I believe that pretty much explains uh, where and why. Uh, any questions or concerns on this one? Uh, Susan, uh, just to let you know, we, we will be buying more dirt just in case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else have any uh, concerns or questions? Seeing none, can I have a motion please? <laughs> Councilor Burridge, Councilor Plunkett. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Councilor McBurdy. You're muted. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Plunkett. Yes. Councillor Burridge. Yes. All right. I believe that's the third and last item from this committee. Uh, is there any old business uh, to attend to here? Actually, Councillor, if uh, I sent you an email to your official email just now. Oh, okay. Let me look. It's an add-on that I meant to forward and uh, forgot until the meeting started and jogged my memory. If you guys aren't comfortable voting on it, it's not urgent, but uh, we can talk about it and vote on it next week if you're comfortable vote on it tonight. All right. Let me uh, open it up. Uh, there's an attachment, I see. Okay, well, let me read it and we'll see. May William J. Barlow Jr. request authorization for the city chamberlain to advance funds of the of the city for the Lakeside Park project to be reimbursed from DASNY grant for same. Uh, and this is the add-on that you're talking about. Yep. Did you want to explain it? Yep, so uh, what this is, and again, it's not urgent, and I apologize that I just broke my own rule, but uh, the uh, in my state of the city, we talked about uh, bringing the uh, gravel parking lot at East 10th and a half street in the second ward uh, back to life or to life. I don't know if it was ever a desirable place, but uh, it's the uh, parking lot at the end of East 10th and a half, and it's the only waterfront property that the city owns on the east side. Uh, the Port Authority owns most of it, and uh, if you remember a few years back, um, used to go down to Flat Rock and so on, that access was actually cut off, uh, leaving east side residents uh, in the east side of the city with no real waterfront access. So at that point, we uh, we started talking about potential projects and the city's uh, ability to do a project is limited except to East 10th and a half. So uh, we have a $100,000 grant from Senator Ritchie to uh, do this project. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, my address, um, what our plan for the area, and it's actually already under construction, is to pave the uh, parking lot because it was uh, gravel before and very, uh, you know, a lot of potholes and uh, ruts in it. Uh, so we're going to pave the uh, area. We have already put down some, uh, we actually put millings down. The area is going to get paved uh, tomorrow, I think. Uh, we put a bunch of soil down between where the parking lot ends and the uh, rocks that already exist there are now. So it gives people a picnic area to lay a blanket or tan or whatever uh, they want to do there. We're uh, putting in a small ramp so people can back right up to the ramp and unload a kayak or a pedal boat if they wish and have access um, right there. We're actually putting in a volleyball pit. The sand's already been dumped uh, to create that volleyball pit. And then uh, if you enter the park just to the left, we cleared out a bunch of brush. And if you go down to Wright's Landing Marina, you'll notice that the grills in the pavilion that was there is gone. 
and uh, we are going to uh, repurpose them and uh, bring the pavilions already over at East 10th and a half, and we'll be uh, re reinstalling the grills there soon. Uh, we're actually having a survey done uh, of the property. It was conducted last Thursday or Friday. And uh, we believe that the city actually owns quite a bit of property along the lake shore. And there's already a trail that's been padded down along the way. So we're going to continue clearing some of that brush along the way to even expand um, waterfront access. So, uh, however, what the agenda item is tonight is uh, as the invoices, uh, if DPW is doing all of this work in house, but they uh, bought the sand for the uh, volleyball pit, they. Um, <coughs> Uh, we'll be buying more sand to put uh, uh, just around by the uh, where we put the grass down. Um, the uh, paving and the millings will be coming in. We're going to have a small electrical service. Um, if you go in the parking lot, it's a wraparound parking lot, and there's a bio swell that we put in just for aesthetics and to actually uh, hide the catch basin we installed and. As you know, bioswales, what we're doing on 48, just treats the rainwater and leads it into a drain. So uh, there'll be some electrical work, um, some of the landscaping that'll go in there. Uh, and anyway, the driveways wrap around and we actually built a small um, uh, area to come off of the driveway a bit. So if a food truck wanted to pull up over and hook into power, they could do that. Or if somebody had a picnic and wanted to hook up music or uh, lights or needed uh, uh, power for whatever reason that's there. We're also going to light the parking lot. That's been a question that uh, we've had asked since we uh, announced it before as if we were going to uh, uh, light the area. We're obviously going to light it and put up some security cameras like we did downtown. So uh, anyway, the agenda item tonight is to take the uh, funding, which we don't have yet, the grant, just like all grants, are reimbursed upon completion. So uh, what I asked the city chamberlain today as these invoices become rolling, come rolling in is uh, if we have to set up a separate account, uh, use that pay money, pay the receipts out of that account, and then uh, be reimbursed once, once the grant comes in, the project's complete. She said yes, so... Um, we're using an account that we've used for previous DASNY grants that we've closed out. DASNY is the state agency where the money comes from. And uh, uh, we will pay the invoices out of that account, assuming you forward uh, next Monday night the 100 grand to that account. And then once the project's done and closed out, the state will reimburse us. We expect the grants $100,000. We, ex we expect uh, the cost of the project. Again, DPW is moving doing most of it in-house. The pavilion was ours. The millions were ours. Um, DPW uh, laid the soil, uh, which was free. Uh, they used their equipment to uh, lay down the millings. Um, so uh, really, um, they dumped the sand. They graded the uh, launch. So a lot of the work's done, but we'll still have the expense. And we uh, figure we'll be right on budget with 100000 If anything, we'll come in a little lower. All right. Very good. Uh, well, I have no problem in uh, in uh, putting this on as an add-on in voting on it. Uh, does anybody else on this committee have any issues with uh, doing this? Councilor Plunkett, Councilor uh, McBurdy, Councilor Burridge, you have any issues with uh, discussing and adding this on? No. no. I'm I'm happy adding it on. I think people are really excited about the project in general. Everything I've heard has been, I mean, some concerns about cancer for people that they'd prefer not to run into, but I think that's something that we just deal with on a regular basis anyway. So, but I think people are really excited about it and I'm glad to see it move forward. All right, very good. Uh, especially since we're being reimbursed for this mayor, it's uh, kind of a no brainer here, right? Uh, they're gonna pay us back. Yep. Is there any concern, Mayor, about how long it'll take for the reimbursement given the state freezing grant funds at this time? Yeah, um, you know, I expect it's going to be a long time. DASNY uh, is often known to take quite a while anyway. So, um, you know, I would expect it to take some time. The project, as I said, DPW already started. They plan to have it done in about two weeks or so because they have to hustle to get it done to get over to rights. They need to fire that project back up. So 
Um, it's going to be done here in a couple of weeks. Um, I have no timeline for reimbursement. I hope end of the year, but uh, it's hard to say right now. Hopefully by the end of the year, but uh, that may be optimistic. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the mayor, uh, Councilor Burridge? I'd just like to make a statement. Uh, when I was out campaigning um, with the loss of uh, Flat Rock, a lot of the people that I spoke to are uh, really looking for something that they could call their own over here in Second Ward, and I think this is it. And there, and anybody I've talked to has, there's no complaints. Everybody's excited about it. Everybody wants it. I think this is something the Second Ward deserves, and uh, it's really going to help out quite a bit over here. Um, um, I believe we're going to have some problems at nighttime like everybody else is, but we've had them over there. We have them everywhere in the city, it seems like, lately. That's something we'll deal with, and we'll come across it. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people here in the ward that are looking to volunteer, help out wherever they can. So we'll see what we can do about maybe taking care of the night problems of people going down there and checking in on a regular basis or something. And right. to your point, I heard some of those same concerns that both counselors just shared. And, you know, one thing I would suggest back to uh, when responding to that is a couple of things. We proved on the river walk for the most part that once you put some cameras up, um, the folks, the whether they're homeless or doing uh, bad things in these areas, the reason they're there is because they don't want to be where other people are. Um, so once we threw lights and cameras up, usually they'll find somewhere else. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, again, they they're, they were probably at East 10th and a half or near there because at night nobody was there. Um, so I think now that we're going to introduce some activity, make the area nice and everything else, uh, you know, my guess is they'll end up finding a, a another site where uh, nobody is, wherever um, that may be. And then, you know, obviously in the beginning, we'll have to send OPD over quite a bit just for security and uh and to uh, make sure people are treating the site properly and the way it should be treated anyway. So um, we're going to, uh, the reason why the name is so generic Lakeside Park is because I found that uh, in Oswego, we tend to name things after everybody. So I figured uh, let's just, uh, we will park up and name it Lakeside Park and let, you know, I'm sure people will come up and maybe our predecessors will have the honors of uh, dedicating it if, if somebody wants that. So. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, any other questions or concerns about this request from uh, for the mayor? Mm -hmm. uh, seeing none, uh, can I have a motion to move this on to full council next week? Councilor Burridge, Councilor uh, McBrearty. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrearty. Yes. Councilor Plunkett. Yes. Councilor Burridge. Yes. All right. Now, let me ask again, is there any uh, other business or old business to attend to? Seeing none this time, can I have a motion to adjourn? Councilor Plunkett, Councilor um, Burridge. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBurdy. Yes. Councilor Plunkett. Yes. Councilor Burridge. Yes. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, uh, this ends the Administrative Services Committee meeting for Monday, June 1st. Thank you for attending and participating. Stay safe.